Good evening, Oswego, and welcome to WTOP 10 Wednesday Night News, your connection to Oswego and beyond. I'm Ian Dembling. And I'm Marissa again. Today is December 5th, and this is your news, sports, and weather all before the first commercial break. Let's take a look at, excuse me, let's take a look at your top stories. 10 News starts now. The photographer who snapped the now famous image of a man about to be struck by a New York subway train is defending himself against critics who say he should have helped, as controversy also rages over the New York Post's decision to publish the picture. Freelance photographer R. Umar Abbasi's image shows 58-year-old Kisa Khan desperately clawing at a New York Square subway platform after being shoved on the tracks by a homeless man whom he had been arguing with. Seconds after Abbasi captured the shot accidentally in an effort to warn the train conductor, he says, the train struck Han. He died at a nearby hospital. Police said Wednesday they had arrested the homeless man Naeem Davis, 30 years old, on murder charges. 39 people have recently been arrested in a statewide drug trafficking operation. Of the 39 arrests, 34 were made in Cortland, Syracuse, and five other central New York locations. Officials say the arrests are the result of a nine-month multi-agency investigation called Operation Southbound, where investiga investigators discovered there were three intertwined drug distribution networks impacting upstate New York. Charges against the 39 individuals include operating as a major trafficker, criminal sale of a controlled substance, and criminal possession of a controlled substance. Well, Marissa, it's December already, and I haven't seen that much snow. Barely at all. It's kind of disappointing, but I'd like to see if we have some a little bit later Me on this too. week. Me too. Now we'll check our current conditions outside with meteorologist Molly Matat. Molly, what's it looking like out there? Good evening, everybody. Meteorologist Molly Matat standing right outside the Campus Center on this lovely Wednesday evening. Right now we're sitting at a pretty chilly 31 degrees outside, a couple clouds up in the sky. but. What's interesting about tonight is that we have a 30 mile per hour wind coming from the north. That's going to cause a substantial wind chill. So if you decide to go outside tonight, just know that it's going to feel more like 22 than 31. So grab the jacket, grab the gloves, grab the scarf, all your winter needs. Um, as we take a look at the radar, we see some snow showers to our south and east around Syracuse. Those were initially in our area today, as you might have seen. Um, however, they've since dissipated and moved past us, but we can't rule out a couple flurries probably before 10 p.m. tonight. Now, as we take a look to the future with our three-day forecast, Thursday is shaping up to be quite a beautiful day. A little bit on the chilly side, but overall pretty sunny, a couple clouds. However, on Friday and Saturday, rain starts to move into the area, and it will continue for a couple of days. I'll have your full forecast right after the break. Back to the desk. The Oswego County Legislator Morris Sorbello said Wednesday that he, the old county jail building will probably be demolished sometime in the spring. According to Legislator Chairman Fred Beardsley, who formed the committee in July because, quote, the building is falling down. The bricks are falling right off the building. We need to address this. It's in such poor shape. Sorbello said his three-person committee began meeting about six months ago with <coughs> tours of the jail. A single wreath was placed at the mouth of Oswego Harbor Tuesday morning in memory of the six Oswego Coast Guard personnel who died 70 years ago. Petty Officer William Phillips said the six died when their boat was overcome by high winds and waves while they were picking up the person manning the West Pierhead Lighthouse at the end of his shift. The Oswego Coast Guard Station remembers the men who died that day to remember who we are and what we do. Earlier today, we had a chance to speak with Lauren Madlin about the blood drive in Hewitt Union. She gave us an exclusive look at how the blood drive is operated. Let's take a look. Hi, I'm Ian Dembling. I'm here for WTOP 10 News, and I'm standing here in the Hewitt Union Ballroom where the American Red Cross blood drive has been taking place. We're going to take a look around and show you all the stuff that's going on. The American Red Cross was founded in Washington, D.C. in 1881. It's a charitable organization and depends on volunteers. Ian had a chance to speak with Lauren Madeline, who organized and ran this week's drive. So what can you tell us uh, today about the Red Cross? How has it been going so far this semester? 
Uh, this semester, especially in August and September, those were the two major blood drives. Um, but right now, we're just trying to get people that donated it in those last two blood drives to come back and show their loyal support to the Red Cross. And so far, it's been really good. We've made goals so far for the first day, and we're try trying to do that for the next two days. That's excellent. Um, what can you the tell? The process to give blood uh, is very what simple. What is something that you would first, tell? First, read over the process while you are waiting. Second, you are led over to the history station where your finger will be pricked and a friendly nurse will ask you a series of questions. Questions such as your address and your phone number. Next is when the actual donating begins. This takes an average of six to eight minutes. Finally, you are led to sit at the canteen, drink water, eat some snacks, and relax. Well, it's been a lot of fun here. We've seen a lot of people helping out a really great cause, donating blood, saving a lot of lives. I'm going to head back to the studio, but I hope everybody comes tomorrow from 11.30 to 5.30 to come donate blood. For Soon Oswego will offer a new bachelor's degree program in electrical and computer engineering starting next fall, coinciding with the opening of college's $118 million science and engineering complex. Oswego is the only second public college in the state to offer an undergraduate degree in electrical and computer engineering. The program joins software engineering in Oswego's computer science department. SUNY Oswego Cinema Studies students in the class Children's Literature and Film present their 8mm short films inspired by children's classic fairy tales. This is a free event taking place in the Children's Room and the Oswego Public Library, Saturday, December 8th from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. Again, this is a free event at the Oswego Public Library this Saturday from 2 to 3 p.m. And now we'll see what's going on in sports with Adam Cesarini. Adam? Thanks guys, I'm Adam Cesarini with your WTOP 10 Sports Update. After a tough loss to Plattsburgh on Whiteout weekend, the now second ranked men's ice hockey team will look to get back on track as they host Utica on Friday at 7 p.m. during the United Way Food and Toy Drive. The game will also broadcast here on WTOP starting at 6.30. The Lakers will look to pick up their ninth win of the season before they travel to Hobart on Saturday. And coming up later, I'll have your full sports report, including two NBA teams looking to forget their last games. But for now, back to the desk. Coming up after the break, military budget cuts from the White House. And if Penn State sorority gets into some trouble, stay tuned at WTLP 10 News. Tomorrow's shaping up to be a pretty sunny, nice day. However, rain's going to move in later in the week and into the weekend. I'll have your full forecast right after the break. program helping you achieve your goals with a customized curriculum developed with flexibility in mind. Take classes year-round, full or part-time in Oswego online or at the Metro Center in downtown Syracuse. More information is available online or by calling 315-312-2911. I'm meteorologist Molly Matat here with your full forecast on this lovely Wednesday evening. 
Let's take a look at the current conditions outside right now. We are sitting at a pretty chilly 31 right now. A couple clouds in the sky. However, if you choose to go outside tonight, be aware that we have some 13 mile per hour winds coming from the north. That's going to make for this chilly 22 degree wind chill. So if you got to go out for any reason tonight, pack the coat, bring the scarf, bring the gloves, keep warm. It's going to be a chilly one. Now let's look at what's happening around the state. Some lower 30s in Syracuse, Rochester, and Glen Falls. 30 up in Plittsburgh, or I'm sorry, Plattsburgh rather. But we're dipping into the 20s in Watertown and Buffalo with 29. Two cold spots tonight at Jamestown and Binghamton, both at a chilly 27. And our hot spot, as usual, New York City with 39. Let's take a quick look at our top headlines for this evening. Mostly sunny skies tomorrow. Should shape up to be a pretty nice day. But it should be rainy by the end of the week and temperatures will become more mild throughout the weekend. So before we get too ahead of ourselves, let's take a look at what's going to happen tonight. We're going to bottom out at around 26. Cloudy skies um, and a light but not too light wind out of the north at 7 to 14 miles an hour. Now let's check out what's going to happen tomorrow. At 10 a.m., like I said, clear skies, a couple passing clouds, but no precipitation to speak of. However, if you look in the upper left-hand corner of your screen, you see these... Um, you see these storms starting to move into our area. This continues to 7 o'clock, and it's going to continue pushing into our area into Friday. But it should hold off for Thursday, and here's why. We have some high pressure over our area right now. That's going to allow for these showers to delay a little bit, and tomorrow should be clear skies. A little cooler, a little bit on the cool side, but clear skies, like I said, a couple clouds, but nothing really to speak of. So tomorrow, mostly sunny. We're going to hit a high of 41 with some light winds out of the southeast. Tomorrow night, the clouds are going to start to move in. We're going to bottom out at 32. And then let's um, take a little bit look forward to this weekend. We have some very cold air in mid-Canada that's going to move into the Midwest, causing some unsettled conditions. However, more in our area, we have this mild, um, warm air mass that's going to be moving towards us. That's why when this precipitation moves into our area, it's not going to be snow showers. It's going to be rain showers. It's a little bit too warm for snow at this point. Taking a look at our five-day forecast, Thursday, again, shaping up to be really nice. Rain moves into the area Friday, into the weekend, temperatures in the upper to mid-40s. And Monday, while it's going to rain, we're going to see a high of 56, a little warmer. Well, thank you, Molly. But we've been seeing all this rain on our forecast. Marissa and I were talking about before, all we want to see is some snow. I know. I understand. All I want is snow, too. But... It's going to be a little bit warmer, so all that moisture in the air, when it falls, it's not going to freeze into our beloved snowflakes. It's going to fall as rain. Uh, I Listen, uh -huh. I hate rain just as much as the next guy, but <laughs> yeah. snow will come eventually. Hopefully next week. <laughs> yes, hopefully. Well, we will take a look now at some state news. only a phone call, but it's the most notable movement we've seen lately in the standoff over the so-called fiscal cliff. President Obama and House Speaker John Boehner spoke by phone this afternoon. An aide for Republican leaders in the House of Representatives confirms the phone call, but would not call any of the details on what was said. Democrats and Republicans have been at a standoff over the fiscal cliff. They're at odds over whether to implement higher taxes on the richest Americans. The President and the Congress have just 27 days to compromise on their own plan before automatic spending cuts and tax hikes take place. The White House has ordered the military to start planning for billions of dollars in possible budget cuts. The Pentagon may have to cut as much as $500 billion from its budget as part of the fiscal cliff. The fiscal cliff is a combination of tax increases and spending cuts that are due to take effect if the White House and Congress cannot agree on tackling deficit reduction by year's end. The Pentagon has said cuts would most likely target research and technology, weapons and civil excuse me, defense department jobs. Penn State University's Chi Omega sorority chapter is under investigation after a photo with Latino stereotypes surfaced on a social media site. It shows a group of sorority members dressed in ponchos and sombreros and fake mustaches. One of the girls holds a sign that says, We'll mow lawn for weed and beer. The university's Panhellenic Council said it had received concerns about the photo and that it does not condone derogatory behavior from members. The executive board said in a statement that they recognize offensive nature of the photo and are therefore taking the matter very seriously. 
The oldest person in the world died Tuesday at the age of 116. Bessie Cooper of Monroe, Georgia is one of only eight people recognized by the Genius World Records and have lived that long. The oldest person to have ever lived was Gina Louise Calment, who died in southern France in 1997 at the age of 122. Protesters to the opposition attacked supporters of President Mohamed Morsi outside Cairo's presidential palace Wednesday night, leaving two dead and many wounded in the latest demonstrations against Morsi's assumption of powers. Three of Morsi's advisors resigned Wednesday in protest of his November edict, while demonstrators set fire to offices of the Muslim Brotherhood and its political arm, the Freedom and Justice Party, in the three cities, days of largely peaceful protests in Tahrir Square had preceded Wednesday's eruption of violence outside the presidential palace. A new study found the sperm count of men in France fell by a third from 1989 to 2005. While it's dramatic decline, the count is still within the range of being fertile. In the study, published online in the journal Human Reproduction, researchers looked at data from more than 26,000 men between the ages of 18 and 70. The authors say their findings are a serious public health warning and want to know if there is an environmental link. And when we come back, we will have your tech update, but first, here's a look at your late night menu. with a customized curriculum developed with flexibility in mind. Take classes year-round, full or part-time in Oswego online or at the Metro Center in downtown Syracuse. More information is available online or by calling 315-312-2911. Capricuzzi scored two goals on Alia Brian Love. Go, and he, Joe, Joe, get, get out. Adam, you're in. Lori Korpakovsky scored two goals on Ilya Brizgalov. Got it! Let's hear from Adam Shear with your technology update. Thanks, Marissa, and good evening, Oswego. While studying for finals week, you may want to have all of your study materials all on your device and keep your work safe in case your computer breaks down. The cloud will help you do that, and I'm actually going to show you a few apps that will help you. Uh, I'm showing them on an iPhone, but you can also use them on Android, on Windows Phone, whatever device you have. So the first one I'm going to show is Dropbox, and this is my favorite of all of the services. So with Dropbox, you, uh, you get two and a half gigabytes of free storage, and you can get more by telling a friend about it or going on Twitter and tweeting about Dropbox. So there are a lot of different ways you can use Dropbox. Certainly here, I have you can put any type of file you want. It's as easy as just dragging it into this magical folder that sits right on your computer, and it uploads to the cloud automatically, which means you don't have to carry around a USB flash drive. You don't have to email files to yourself. These files are accessible from anywhere. So even if your computer breaks down, you can back up everything right here. So now if you have an iPhone, you can actually use iCloud, which is a service free for iPhone, iPad, and iPod Touch users. Also to mention Dropbox is free as well. But with iCloud, what you can do is everything syncs up on your Apple devices. So if you take a photo on your iPhone, it'll automatically appear on your iPad and your Mac. That is if you have OS X Mountain Lion, the newest Mac operating system. 
but all of this is free and easy to use. If you want to put your music in the cloud, iTunes does have a service, but it costs a bit of money if you want to do it for free. Uh, Google Music is probably the thing I'd recommend. With Google Music, you can hold up to 20,000 songs for free, and it's as easy as, again, dragging them right into Google, and it uploads straight to the cloud, and you can use it on your phone's web browser, and if you have an Android phone, there's a special Google Music app that you can download where it's just all of your music will just stream right from the cloud for free. Thank you so much, Adam. That is some excellent information. Uh, what else can you tell us about some new technology that we might be seeing people be getting for the holiday times, the Christmas time of year? For holiday times, there's a lot of different stuff. I certainly see uh, tablet computers, certainly Windows 8 just recently released in the Microsoft Surface. Also convertibles, I saw these earlier this year and I thought these are going to catch on, which wow. are these, well, they started off as Ultrabooks, where the, which are these notebook computers that are as thin and light as a tablet. With a lot of them, you could turn over the monitor and it's a touch screen, so they act as a tablet as well. Yes, I think I saw a commercial for that. Did you? I think I did. Yeah, there are definitely commercials showing off those. Uh-huh. Um, do you own any of them, being a tech whiz and everything? Um, I own a few things, not, nothing mm -hmm. Windows 8 related, but... Are you a Mac user? I am as of right now, but Windows <laughs> is still good, too. Yes, that's true. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Adam. And now, uh, we'll take a look at some entertainment news. Rihanna will star in her own reality show, and Jay-Z shows his humble side. And Elizabeth Carradine has the day's entertainment headlines in this Hollywood Minute. Rihanna is the latest celeb to land a reality show. She will produce and star in a fashion series for Style. The show, called Style to Rock, will search for the next great fashion designer. A nationwide casting call is underway. Rihanna's latest project premieres next year. Jay-Z is one of the most famous, wealthiest men in entertainment, but he's not too famous or too rich for the subway. Despite his entourage, not everyone he encounters knows who he is. Watch this. The video was captured for a documentary about Jay-Z's recent performances in Brooklyn. He was riding the train en route to his final show at the Barclays Center. The jazz world is mourning the loss of a legend. Dave Brubeck has died. He was headed to a doctor's appointment Wednesday when his son sensed something was wrong and called 911. Brubeck was rushed to the emergency room where doctors could not save him. He died of heart failure. Thursday would have been his 92nd birthday. Some of Brubeck's best known works include Take 5 and Blue Rondo a la Turk. And now, let's take a full look at sports with Adam Cesarini. Adam? Thanks, guys. The Lady Lakers basketball team continued their winning ways by knocking off SUNY Brockport by a final score of 53-37. Carrie Kipper placed the Lakers with, paced the Lakers with 17 points in the win. The women's basketball team now has the best-ranked scoring defense in the country, holding opponents to just 39.5 points per game. The Lakers are undefeated at 6-0 on the season and will look to keep the streak going as they host University of Rochester on Saturday at 1 p.m. New York Jets head coach Rex Ryan announced that Mark Sanchez will remain the starter for Sunday's game against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Ryan benched Sanchez in last week's game against the Arizona Cardinals after he threw three interceptions, increasing his total to 18 turnovers on the season. The Jets' offense is ranked 31st in the league, and the team has a faint hope to make the playoffs with their 5-7 record. The Jets are on the road this Sunday facing the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Miami Heat and Los Angeles Lakers both had nights that they will want to forget. Despite LeBron James' triple-double, the Heat suffered a shocking loss to the Washington Wizards, who before the night had just one win on the season. They will play the New York Knicks this Thursday in a rematch from their first meeting, in which the Knicks won 104-84. The Lakers continued their slow start by giving up a fourth-quarter lead and losing to the Houston Rockets 107-105. The Lakers are now 8-10 on the season and will travel to New Orleans tonight to play the Hornets. That's it for sports. Now back over to the news desk. And when we come back, we'll take a look at the lighter side of news and a final look at your forecast. Stay tuned at WTOP 10 News.
Get your Smokey on. If you see someone in danger of starting a wildfire, step in and make a difference. Because nine out of ten wildfires can be prevented. Only you can prevent wildfires. Oswego MBA program, helping you achieve your goals with a customized curriculum developed with flexibility in mind. Take classes year-round, full or part-time in Oswego online or at the Metro Center in downtown Syracuse. More information is available online or by calling 315-312-2911. Here's a dive into the lighter side of news. A new pizza flavored perfume has been created by the Pizza Hut company. Pizza Hut decided to launch this campaign after a survey on Facebook, where the new name of the fragrance received a very large number of responses. They sent their fragrance to a hundred of their Facebook commenters and plan to distribute more in the future. This fragrance would be a great idea to use at your next pizza party. A six-year-old boy in San Antonio has the best gift ever for Christmas, his dad returning from the Persian Gulf for the holidays. Ethan Keller was surprised by his father while at school. The two have been separated for the past nine months since his father's deployment. The Keller family arranged a school surprise about two weeks ago. Father says he is really, really happy. Staff Sergeant Jesse Keller says he has not been told when he'll be deployed again. Santa has traded in his sleigh for a wetsuit at the Sea Life Aquarium in Grapevine, Texas. Starting today, Wednesday, scuba diving Santa will be making his list and checking it twice in a 145,000 gallon tank. A local news station got an early look Tuesday. Sea Life workers say diving with Santa is as much fun for them as it is for the kids who watch them. Scuba diving Santa will take plunge at the aquarium every Wednesday and Saturday through December 22nd. And now let's take a final look at your forecast with meteorologist Molly Matat. Thanks, guys. Let's take a one last quick look at your class day forecast for tomorrow. Those of you rising early and going to those 8 a.m. classes, you're going to wake up to a chilly 26 degrees tomorrow morning. So you're going to want to pack the coat and the rest of the winter gear, but it's not going to get uh, too much warmer throughout the day. Still pretty cold. We're going to reach our max of 36 at 3 o'clock. And one last look at what's going to happen this weekend. We're going to see some mild temperatures in our area, and that's going to allow all these showers that we're um, having to fall as rain rather than snow. Well, thank you, Molly. There's a lot of great news going on out there. How about that Pizza Hut fragrance? That's interesting. Would you wear that, Ian? I don't know. Maybe if we all threw a pizza party together. How about I'll throw yeah. a pizza party, we'll all have some, some Pizza Hut. Yeah, definitely. That's a great idea. But you know what? Uh, the holiday season's coming up, and nothing's a better surprise than seeing your dad after such a long time. That was so touching. Touched my Ethan heart. Ethan Keller. So sweet. I could tell all he could say was that he was happy. He had nothing else on his mind. Oh, absolutely. I would awesome. be too. Absolutely. Okay, definitely, definitely. Does anybody else have some great holiday plans for this this upcoming break? Just nothing. Spending it with my family. Yes, a lot of family time. <laughs> well. I'll be making you all jealous when I'm getting tan in Florida, but I'll be thinking about all of you. <laughs> okay. It's been a really great semester with all of you. Definitely I really do miss that. Well, that'll about do it for us here at the WTOP 10 News for the 10 News team. I'm Adam Cesarini. I'm Molly Matat. I'm Marissa McGinn. And I'm Ian Dumbling. It's been a wonderful semester. Happy holidays.